Hey, this is Don from Padlock Technologies again with another video. This time, we are going to talk about NDFC multi-cluster. So this is different from multi-site. Um, this is basically a technique where you can use one cluster to manage multiple clusters. Now, if you there's no multi-site, but if you are interested in seeing NDFC with multi-site, I'm going to put this video up here. I go through the whole thing, the whole gambit about what that looks like. Again, nowadays, most people are not going to do MB, MP, BGP, EVPN, VXLAN from scratch. Most people are not going to do that. They're going to either use ACI or they're going to use NDFC or they're going to use some other vendors, product like Arista's, Cloud Vision, stuff like that. I think Juniper has his own, or MIS has his own product as well. but I'm going to get straight into it. So here's the lab. We have one, we have three actually NDFC devices here. We have our main cluster here that we're going to use to manage the Baltimore cluster. And the BWI cluster. So I'm not really sure why something came up here, but we're going to go and click, so click out of that because we don't really care about any of this. So What's going to happen is the Baltimore cluster is managing its respective fabric. And just so you know, I'm going to go over here real quick and remind me later. We do have this fabric does work. It's just not for show. So I can ping, ping 10.1.1.2. And as you can see, that is server two and VXLAN is working there. And then let's go over to BWI. Open that up real quick. Show IP. And ping 10.100.1.2. So as you can see, VXLAN is working. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to log into the main cluster, which is this one up here at the top. And you're going to see me move between Baltimore and the BWI cluster. That's the whole point of this multi-cluster design. For people that are managing multiple or separate clusters, this would be what, this is the technique that you would use if you're gonna use NDFC. If you're using something like uh, ACI, you're gonna use this thing called an MSO, which is the multi-site orchestrator to manage both uh, fabrics. So let's go into the dashboard. So here I'm actually using 4.1, which is the newest one that's out. So what we're gonna do and what you have to do, first thing I'm gonna do is log in as admin. So you can see this. So let's log in as admin real quick. Hopefully I didn't fat finger that. Oh, yep, fat fingered it. So we'll log in as admin. So how do you set this up? Very simple. First thing you got to do, it's a couple things. I don't know. Let me not say very simple, but the first thing you have to do is you go to your system settings and you see this multi cluster connectivity. This is really the end all be all for this. So you go to your multi cluster connectivity, and as you can see, we have three clusters here. Now it's very simple to add the cluster, but before we do that, I do want to show you a couple things. So user and security. Now we have this authentication domain. I created this when I created the multi-cluster connectivity. You need to do this so you can hop between different fabrics, right? If you don't have this, you'll have to, you, you basically can't log into the, to the other clusters. So what this does is once we log into this domain, it'll give me the ability to jump from cluster to cluster. Now back to the two settings here. So once you add your two clusters, your whatever, how many clusters in here, this will be the main the main cluster. Once you do multi-cluster connectivity, that will be the primary cluster. So you have to be careful from a design standpoint, which one is going to be your primary cluster that you're going to be using to get into all the other clusters. You don't want to do this on the wrong cluster, and now you have to use that cluster to manage everything. So to add it, though, you go to Action, Connect the Cluster, you do ACI or Nexus dashboard, hit Nexus dashboard, you put the, you know, IP address of one of the nodes in the cluster. You want to do the cluster leader and it will add the other two. Um, and then you put the username, password, domain, 
and then if it's a multi-domain. Now, once you do that, you also need to create a user called multi, uh, a user that has at least fabric controller um, a role in a security of all. So I'll show you what that looks like. So domain of all, and then you at least need to be a fabric admin. Because if you don't do that, you won't be able to do anything, right? You won't be able to actually manage any fabrics. Now, here's the caveat of this. And this is this is the most important piece because this got me, this tricked me up a little bit. Once you create that account, you can't log in with the admin account because the admin account, as you can see, you see that if you see it here, it won't allow me to go to any cluster. You can't do this under the admin account. You have to do it under the other account. So now that we created that account, as you can see, there's nothing from a topology standpoint, nothing here in this fabric. This is only used to manage the other fabric. We're going to log out here. And then we're going to log in. I'm going to switch it to that domain that I was talking about. And we're going to log in with the account that we just created for this. Let's log in here. And now you're going to see something different here. So as you can see, nothing here, right? Because we're still in the same uh, main fabric. So I didn't create anything there. But as you can see, I can actually switch between the Baltimore and the BWI fabric. Right, so now I can manage all my fabrics in one technical dashboard. So if I do all fabrics, it'll give me all the information for both fabrics I'm managing. So what I want to do is click this number two here, and as you can see, it drills down into both fabrics, right? That I've created, it drills down into them. Right now, if I want to see topology information, I can go to topology, and it'll show me the topology what it looks like for both fabrics so this is my baltimore so i'll open that up jump me right into that all right and this is basically what you saw in the lab and then if i go back to all fabrics and let me go down to you know bwi here same thing i always manipulate the the screen so it looks the way it's supposed to look but this is the spine leaf architecture or cloth architecture now, from a managing standpoint, if I wanted to manage a fabric or what, look at some inventory information, we can do inventory and we won't really see anything there. I think, I, let me move this out the way. Here we go. So we got the switches that I got in both fabrics, which that should show up, but it's not showing up. I think something's going on with the lab, obviously. Um, but what we can do is go to the Baltimore fabric or I can go to, you know, see the clusters and stuff like that but i'll click fabric for here so now it shows me the two fabrics that i am managing with the main fabric and as you can see the asn number is 65001 and asn asn 65002 you know the respective fabric it's e it's ibgp in each fabric now you have fabric groups that you can put in there but i just made them singular fabrics now, what if I want to do something in the fabric? Well, I simply just click on the fabric that I want to manage, and it will actually pop me into that cluster, right? Boom. Now, obviously, because I'm not having, I don't trust the certificate, I'm going to get that message all the time. So if I went back to all clusters again, let me click on BWI so I can get that as well. And that'll take me to that cluster. Now, going forward, if I went back to all clusters and I click on Baltimore, I'm not going to get the error message, obviously, because I accepted the certificate. So now this is the fabric, and it jumps me right into that fabric, right? And as you can see, from a since this is 4.1, this looks totally different from the last, like when you see that video for multi site, different version. So now, to get to certain things it's now segmentation and security so you go to that and now it looks just normal here's the uh, l l4 l7 services which is your firewall insertions kind of stuff um then i have one network that network is basically the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 network vlan 2300 now this is all default stuff you can change it but here's your VRFs. Here's a VRF that I deployed in that fabric. Then if we look at the connectivity from a switch standpoint, 
here's the interface that's plugged into when you saw those ping tests working. So if we go back here and we look at ETH13, which is this port here, that matches with this one here. So ETH13. And then if I wanted to edit the configurations, I can edit the configurations here if I wanted to, but no need because we already got everything working. But again, I can jump. This is the same topology information that you saw before. All right, so I'm in the cluster right here. And again, from a fabric standpoint, if I jumped into the fabric and jumped into it, gives me everything I need to do. As you can see, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't log out of, you know, uh, the main cluster and then logged into the other one. And if you notice at the top, the IP address is changing. So if I go back to DC1, you see it's now dot 22. If I go to the BWI cluster, it is 24. So it's hopping from one to one when I want to go to the individual cluster. Now, when I go to all clusters, it's still on 24, but I'm managing all the clusters. I'm getting all the information I need from one dashboard, so to speak, right? I'm just changing in uh, in between. But again, that's me logging into one cluster and managing the other ones. So that is Nexus dashboard multi-cluster connectivity in a nutshell. Again, there's there's more to it, but obviously I don't have licensing for this. So, I, you know, there's certain things that I, I can't show you, but I can at least show you what it kind of looks like for managing multiple clusters using Nexus dashboard. Um, if you like stuff like this, please do not forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Repost this on the videos. I don't know a lot of people that know about multi-cluster connectivity in NDFC. So, you know, this is something that you can put in your tool bag and some knowledge that you learned today on this video. This is Don from Padlock Technologies again. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.